Hey everyone and welcome to yet another on the road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. As always, I'm your security nerd and host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting February 25th, 2013. This week's episode comes to you from the 2013 RSA Security Conference here in San Francisco. So we'll start the week's news with some of the themes and highlights from RSA. Uh, One of the big themes this year was RSA's own theme of big data. Uh, Big data is a huge topic right now. We put a lot of information in the cloud. Uh, We have tons and tons of different uh, appliances that can log a ton of information. So we have tons of network logging information. There's all kinds of different analytics services that are gathering data about our browsing habits and things like that. And this big data can have both security uh, ramifications as well as security benefits. Now some of the security issues is when we're sharing so much data in so many different ways, uh, trying to identify uh, important, sensitive, and confidential information and protect it can be a challenge. The other issue is if you're dealing with tons and tons of logs and tons of, of networking data, how do you find that one specific log that might help you identify an attack? Now on the flip side, if you're very, very savvy at handling big data, it can actually help with security. If you have uh, good statistical analytics and things like that, you can actually look at all this data and come up with some very important trends and behaviors that might help you uh, protect yourself from threats and so on. So that was one of the themes. Another big theme, obviously, that I don't want to spend much time on is really APT attacks in China. Uh, Right before RSA last week, I talked about Mandian's APT1 report, and there's been all this uh, talk about Chinese attackers targeting uh, U.S. intellectual property. So, of course, many, many people at the conferences were talking about this uh, potential threat and how you might prevent yourself from being attacked by Chinese attackers. One other newsworthy item is during the week, this wasn't associated with RSA, but the Chinese government actually reacted to uh, Mandian's uh, uh, APT allegations, essentially saying, their government isn't actually attacking U.S. private infrastructure. And furthermore, they actually shared information that they detect uh, hundreds of thousand attacks a month coming from the U.S. targeting their military sites. So according to China, the U.S. government or, or U.S. cyber attackers are attacking Chinese government sites as well. The final theme I want to talk about, it wasn't a major theme, but it's an undercurrent theme that I sort of detected, was promoting security user awareness and and user education. Promoting security user awareness is something a lot of cybersecurity experts actually aren't for. A lot of people kind of naysay user awareness, saying spending too much time trying to educate users doesn't really result in any solid change. However, I believe just the opposite. Now that cyber attacks are becoming more uh, mass uh, newsworthy and are becoming more mainstream. They're also affecting more normal consumers. I actually believe user awareness is an important aspect of your security strategy. Uh, Users often make mistakes. All the security controls in the world are not going to prevent a user from doing something silly and still infecting your network. Meanwhile, if a user is properly educated, he can actually be a a advocate for security. He can help you secure your environment. In any case, there are a number of talks where uh, there were panels promoting user awareness and user education. And I had many private talks myself with people on the show floor who also agreed with this. In any case, those are three of the themes that came up at RSA. They, of course, were still talking about mobile attacks, the cloud, BYOD, and all the normal things. But as some quick RSA highlights, I'll be sure to include some newsworthy links in the blog post associated with this video. Next, let me really quickly cover some software application vulnerabilities and updates that cropped up during the week. First, on our blog, I talked about uh, Adobe's emergency flash update. Uh, Adobe and researchers found attackers exploiting two new zero-day flash vulnerabilities in the wild. So during the week, they released yet another flash update. I believe this is the third for the month of February. So they've released a lot of flash updates this month. 
nonetheless, if you're a Flash user, attackers are exploiting these vulnerabilities, so you want to go and update Flash this week. On top of that, there's been news of a research organization uncovering yet another two Java Zero Day vulnerabilities. Now, the research organization has disclosed these to Oracle, and while they've let the press know about these vulnerabilities, they haven't actually disclosed them publicly. So we're not aware of any attackers actually exploiting this. Nonetheless, you can surely expect some more Java updates in the future. Finally, there's news of cPanel. cPanel is a popular uh, web application, uh, something web administrators might add to their, their uh, website. Uh, if you use cPanel, you're quite aware of what it is. In any case, some attackers were able to breach cPanel's infrastructure, and as a result, they may have stolen the login credentials of many cPanel users, and they were also able to actually booby trap uh, some of those cPanel users uh, uh, websites uh, with a backdoor, uh, SSH backdoor. So if you're a cPanel user, you'll definitely want to change your login credentials and you'll want to check out cPanel's alert to see what you should do about this particular attack. Next, let's move on to the latest malware news and state-sponsored cyber attack. During the week, Kaspersky, one of our antivirus partners, released some details about some malware or a malware campaign they're calling MiniDuke. Uh, MiniDuke was essentially very similar to much of the other advanced malware they've been talking about recently. Uh, one of its key things is in order to uh, infect people with the MiniDuke malware, these attackers were leveraging a zero-day reader vulnerability. Frankly, it's the reader uh, vulnerability uh, Adobe patched last week, which we uh, put in a pre previous alert on the WatchGuard Security Center. In any case, they had sent a very targeted spear phishing email that contained uh, a, a PDF document that looked very, very legitimate. If you open this PDF uh, document and you hadn't patched Reader, in fact, they were exploiting this vulnerability before Adobe patched it, uh, you'd be infected with the MiniDuke malware. Uh, this malware seems to be targeting uh, critical infrastructure, think tanks, and government-related organizations like all the others. Uh, it's not just U.S. government, it's mostly uh, European government organizations, some U.S. think tanks and, and research facilities and things like that. So be aware of the MiniDuke malware. Of course, some of your defenses against this, first get that reader patch we talked about in a previous alert. Be sure to use antivirus products and keep them up to date. If you have a WatchGuard XTM appliance, our product will help you protect uh, yourself against these types of malware. And always be careful for uh, when you're interacting or opening unsolicited documents. If you get a document that you're not expecting, you may want to reconsider opening it. So I'll end this week's story with an interesting HTML5 related browser vulnerability. During the week, a, a researcher released details about uh, what he's calling the fill disk vulnerability. This is a vulnerability that's due to one of the new methods in HTML5. And one of its particular additions allows you to use a, a client's local storage to store larger files when you're, you have a multimedia website. The write-up for this uh, local storage actual method is supposed to limit the amount of local storage a web browser or a web client uses or allows a, a website to use, typically limiting it to uh, 5 to 10 megabytes. And it's also supposed to pay attention to the domain and make sure that a website in a particular domain only uses a certain amount of local storage space. However, this particular researcher found that many web browsers, in fact most web browsers, Safari, Chrome, and Internet Explorer, and so on, do not properly limit the amount of storage when you're tricking it with subdomains. And as a result, he created a proof of concept site where if you visit the site, it will actually fill up your hard drive disk with files, unnecessary files, to the point where it can actually cause a denial of service overfilling your hard drive. And in fact, uh, he put the proof of concept site up there. You can visit it. Be very careful if you do it, uh, mostly if you have a solid state drive, as it happens very, very quickly. In any case, as interesting HTML5 related vulnerability, I expect browsers will fix it. One note, if you're a Firefox user, you are immune to this, since they seem to incorporate the local storage HTML HTML5 uh, method properly. So Firefox users don't have to worry about this. 
Well, that's it for this week. I hope you find it useful. As always, I'll have a reference section in the blog version of this post that has a lot more details about all of these stories, so feel free to check it out. And as always, you should be visiting the WatchGuard Security Center blog for more regular security news. You can also follow me. I'm at SecAdept on Twitter or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank you.